pictures that you saw of Germany as well were from that collection, which is why they're you know, really interested in not me taking the camera and high um, So next up, we've got kind of three boards that really fit in our scale. So Gavin's going to lay the groundwork, and then it's going to be built on by a couple of other guys explaining how they're using that kind of framework. So Gavin from the corner of the floor. Um, aim. 
Um, so first of all, we need to bring together those different stakeholders um, and invite people to, to help co-create the project and co-create conservation maps. And that's part of why I'm here talking to you tonight before we've actually kind of built our um, online platform, which is probably the next stage in, in the project, um, because we, we invite you to be part of helping us to co-create that. Um, we're also very really keen, uh, and indeed it's essential that we engage and develop new world technology and innovation hubs, of which there are now many, uh, and they're springing up um, very quickly. Um, some are kind of dying quite fast, and some are, some are thriving. Um, because we don't just build solutions to things in, um, in Cambridge, where we're, we're based at our head office, or in Washington, D.C., uh, or in other developed, uh, developed nations and cities, and we're keen to see solutions up. Of the ground that is very much by the approach to conservation. Um, and part of this community development will be also creating opportunities for people to go um, offline to go online. Um, just to highlight some of the examples of the community that we're building, um, ARM, some of you will be familiar with the ARM technology company, who um, are the world's leading uh, uh, producer of microprocessing intellectual property. Um, they're supporting us as core and um, founding parts in conservation labs. Um, sorry, I should perhaps use a clean web from the UK logo there, but the clean web very keen to engage with you guys um, in this uh, as we go forwards. Um, open knowledge as well. I just got back from Berlin last week. Other people, I know there's a few people here that were in Berlin, so good to see you again um, for the Open Knowledge Festival. Um, and I know Dan is going to talk um, shortly about the um, the hackathon against climate change um, in September that we're engaging with as uh, ecosystems of nature. Uh, the, the, the ecosystems of nature. Um, this is an example snapshot of a few different kinds of people we're engaging. Also, FFI has a, has a network of over 300 partnerships that we work on uh, already, um, and they range from governments to very small scale um, local community based organisations in 40 or so different countries. So our model is very much about building capacity from the ground up um, and supporting people to develop their own solutions. Um, so the second aim of, of conservation is just about actually having built this community and brought people together who share a commitment to biodiversity conservation. Um, we want to utilise our creativity uh, or the creative capacity of that community to develop some solutions, technology based solutions um, to conservation challenges. Um, so we're going to do that through a series of uh, a range of different ways, one of which will be using open innovation. So we're putting out themes, challenges, open innovation challenges, um, and inviting people to participate in those. Um, they might range from things like um, tackling illegal trading, illegal trading wildlife. Uh, it might be how might we go about using technology to reduce um, the incidences of um, human wildlife conflict, which is a big issue in many of the countries we operate in. Um, how might we better manage marine protected areas using technology? So we'll, we'll put them out in the theme of open innovation challenges. The other way is, is hackathons, so I, I won't talk about that too much because Dan's going to talk about uh, the, the September hackathon after this presentation. Um, but a big part of it for us will be actually using compelling data visualizations as well. Um, and that's where I hope this community can help us a lot. Um, we really want to provide access to open data, open source software. Um, to uh, tell the conservation story in a really compelling way. Um, I'm really with Matt when he talks about, um, when he spoke about how um, conservation you know, has a job to do to do <coughs> effectively but not negatively. Um, and we want, really want to lead with some really inspiring stories of how conservation uh, can affect change um, and hope that by doing that there's really compelling visualisations that we can um, uh, encourage more people to get involved um, and do more. Um, also, we want to provide access to open um, source hardware and other collaborative uh, development tools. Uh, a key part of the problem solving aspects of conservation labs as well will be uh, tracking the development of emerging technologies. So, um, if we don't know what exists and what technologies are capable of doing, then we won't know as a conservation community um, how those tools might be applied for conservation. Um, we'll always lead with the need, um, but we also have to engage in uh, horizon scanning exercises, which we actually do as an organisation anyway. Um, but that's, that's the purpose of that. 
so the community will help to share uh, news of those uh, emerging technologies, how they might be best applied to some specific challenges that we're struggling with. Um, the next part is really just making sure that once we've developed a solution or something that looks uh, promising, um, that it actually gets a really uh, proper run in the field as well, um, iteratively, rapidly, um, and uh, you know, shortly after the, the solution has been developed. So, we've, um, in order to do that, um, we're going to be using industry-sponsored grants to um, to just kind of and uh, seed investment. Um, for the most promising solutions that are developed through the labs. Um, and as well as having um, field-based labs uh, as well. So the first of those will be at um, Old Pedrington Conservancy, which is in Kenya, um, where we, it's one of the few places, so, some of you will know a bit about uh, the Internet of Things and um, TV white space. I think I came to a meeting previously um, where that was. <coughs> um, it's one of the few places where we're operating in Kenya where we have a, a license to use TV white spaces for um, ubiquitous uh, broadband connection in very remote areas. So um, it gives us the ability to, to test all sorts of uh, interesting uh, kind of um, tech tools in a place where we really need to find solutions. Um, so we also have a mobile as well. We're, we're just about to go into um, a conservation campus in Cambridge where we're headquartered um, with eight other conservation organisations in the University of Cambridge, uh, several development departments of the University of Cambridge, so it's called the Cambridge Conservation Initiative and uh, we'll all be co located there on the campus, so we'll have a space there as well for uh, collaborating and uh, physically uh, around some of these things. Um, and also obviously virtual labs of our tech partners such as Arm and others that come on board the industry. Um, final aim for conservation labs is just um, actually more, more about its business model really than making sure that some of these um, uh, solutions that we develop through the labs um, actually get implemented at scale as well. So, you know, we're obviously very concerned with the kind of field based application of uh, some of the tools. Um, but once we hit on something that looks like we can have a significant conservation impact, um, then we'll, uh, we're developing an investment fund. Uh, that will enable us to take some of those promising solutions to scale. Uh, and part of that is about um, uh, supporting local enterprise as well um, in the areas that we focus. So, um, whilst um, a large part of our work is about supporting local communities to, um, to develop livelihoods which are sustainable and enable them to, um, to develop a living um, without um, <coughs> drawing too heavily on, on unsustainable natural resources. Uh, it's quite feasible that if we can develop some tools locally um, in the areas that we work um, and give enterprise development support to help to enable people to get little tech startups up and running, then they might actually start to use that as a, an alternative source of income um, as well. So, two versions on the same, and not the right energy for this evening. Um, uh, and the other thing there is just about providing um, an open platform. So, we want the Conservation Labs platform, the online platform. Um, to be fully open so that all of the um, data that's collected about what kind of impact um, the um, solutions are having is, is shared in an open, open forum and the community that, that basically own the platform um, can see in real time you know, what kind of effect these things are having, what, what problems that we might be encountering and we can develop them iteratively, collaboratively so that we um, uh, have the desired impact. And uh, I think that might be one of the specific. Uh, and that's it, that's Conservation Labs in a whirlwind tour of what we're trying to do. So, thank you very much. Any questions? Hi. What's the uh, time scale of this? Because you, you mentioned a few times about uh, trying to kind of progressing through as quickly as possible and the funding aspect and I mean in kind of conservation world that seems to be the problem a lot of the time is that the, the solutions come from you know, the kind of corporate world and it takes a long time for that to filter down into the not very well funded kind of yeah. conservation movements. Yeah that's a really good point. So uh, for those listening um, the question was what, what sort of time scales we're talking about because there is a sort of traditional lag between solutions being developed and uh, uh, and then they'll be implemented, and particularly in the conservation field, which isn't terribly well funded, generally speaking. Um, 
it can take a very long time to, to get things implemented. If I have approached your yes, question. Very much. Okay. Um, so what we want to, so with the pilot phase is we, I mean basically what, as soon as we close um, an open innovation challenge <coughs> or a hackathon, um, then there'll be seed funding in place at the close of that uh, to, to develop uh, the field pilot sort of immediately. Um, or to work with the timescale of the solution holders, to whoever that may be. Um, and then for the for the investment fund, actually we're in the process of, we're actually just setting up at the moment. So um, that will be, uh, and the purpose of that is to ensure that as soon as something looks investment ready, um, that we can invest in it theoretically immediately because we don't you know, want a big time lag on that. We'll have a few investment meetings uh, well, we have a sort of rolling process of investment meetings um, throughout the year, so you know, I mean that should theoretically that should be something that, that you know happens very quickly because that's the problem it's trying to address is, is as you say you know it's very long time delay uh, in applying for funding for things. Yeah, but my actual incentive has to be from the, the funding rather than from the kind of commercial gain that because most of these projects don't really have commercial gain apart from you know the money that you might get for implementing. Yeah, so, so actually one of the things that we do have to do, I mean, some of them actually, uh, there the could be a reason being, there's some very big uh, sort of market opportunities in conservation actually. Um, so we, FFI has an a, um, environmental markets team that looks specifically at this, um, not specifically for, for technology based innovations, but um, you know, if we can create a market for some of the solutions that come out of the lab, which is what we certainly hope to do, um, then it will do two things. One, it will actually accelerate their uh, scale and, and implementation, which means more conservation impact. Uh, and the second thing is that um, the way that we're going to structure the fund means that we'll have a, an appropriate um, revenue share in some of the innovations that uh, come out of the lab as well. Um, so that hopefully we'll, we'll move to the where we've got a sustainably resource project going forward. That's the theory. Could we get time for one more question? Okay, I think this chap at the back has hand up. So um, the question was, how do we, um, to what extent, will we link up with other cons conservation organisations to increase the impact? Um, the, th this is conceived not as an FFI project, and in fact, uh, in terms of branding, um, it's, it's, the branding will be very much, I mean, it's called Conservation Labs, it's not called FFI, it's Conservation Labs. Um, it's, it's there for the conservation community. So we're, we'll, as I mentioned before, we've got you know, a network of over 300 partners, not only from conservation organisations, but, but the vast majority. Um, and so, you know, we're engaging, we will be engaging all of those partners in, in the initiative as we go forward. I mean, a lot of the kind of effort at this stage has been about uh, looking outside of the conservation community, um, but we've certainly been communicating with other partners within it as well about what we're doing. So, but yeah, it, it, it's conceived to be um, a project for the entire conservation community and for um, those other um, different groups that I 